So the last thing that we really need to do here is just this last step of constructing your shear moment diagram. So I'll go back and I'm gonna draw this shear diagram the same way we've always done before. So at you know this, this first point here, we're gonna draw a line that goes straight up so there's our line from zero shear all the way up to 6.4. Then we'll draw another line that slopes down at one kip per foot all the way down to this minus 5.6. So hopefully you can see that you know this is gonna drop at one kip per foot in 12 times one, you know, 12 feet times one kip. It's gonna bring us down 12 kips to minus 5.6. So let's draw that line in. And there's the line, right? And basically what we're gonna do next is we're gonna draw a line up back to zero to close it. And you might be saying, well, we didn't ever solve for the reaction at that point. And you're right, but if you think of it, the reaction has to be 5.6 to bring us back to zero. We'll take a look at that as well a little bit later. But for now, I'm just gonna draw this line in to go back to zero. I'm gonna shade this in a little bit just to make it look pretty. And that's our shear diagram for, for beam AB. So let's do the same thing for BC. We're gonna start you know, at zero and go essentially up to 2.9. We're gonna come straight over so the load doesn't change. Come down four kips and back over. So let's draw those lines in. All right, so there's our line up and over to this four kips. Now we need one down. So we drop four kips until we get to about 1.1 minus 1.1. Then we'll close this and come straight over because we have no more force on this beam between the point load and point C. So it's just gonna come straight over to minus 1.1. And once we have our lines in, we can just come back and shade this thing in. All right, so now we'll just shade it in and we are done. So there's our two shear diagrams, right? And what I like to do is I like to label these areas because as we integrate the area of the shear, we're gonna get our moment. So I like to maybe call this A1, this is A2, I'll call this you know A3, and this A4. So we should be able to find these, uh, these areas fairly reasonably well. And if you remember, right, we know that this distance X this distance x isn't just in the middle of the beam, but this distance is going to equal the height of the shear divided by the slope of this line. So the slope of this line is equal to the, the uniform load. So for every one foot we come over, we come down one kip. And so what we're gonna say is, well, we know 6.4 kips divided by one kip per foot is gonna equal 6.4 feet. Okay, so now, once we know that, we have everything we need to come and draw our moment diagram. So I'm gonna label this point, uh, point zero, so this will be point zero, this will be one, this will be two. Um, similarly, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm just gonna keep my numbering going here. I'm gonna label this point three, this point four, and this point five. So basically what I wanna do next is solve for my areas and then solve for my moments. So the area here, A1, right, is just gonna equal one half of the base, or 6.4 feet, times 6.4 kips. Okay, so what that looks like is we get a value of 20.48 kip feet. And I'm just gonna continue with my areas here, but area two is gonna be one half of, essentially the difference here is gonna be, well, if this is 6.4, uh, 6.4 from 12, this distance is gonna be 5.6 feet. And what we get is, you know, similarly 5.6 feet times 5.6 kips, and I'll leave a minus sign in there because it's a negative 5.6 equals minus 15.68 kip feet. So those are our two areas, and now what we wanna do is we wanna look at our moments. So the thing is, we know our moment at point zero. We already know this, right? This is just gonna be 13.6 feet. And the question is, is that positive or negative? And you might be saying, well, it started out in the moment distribution process as negative, and then you drew it down as positive. Well, what is it? Well, this is where we go to sign convention Number three, we look at our internal sign convention here. And this internal sign convention says, anything that causes tension in the bottom and compression on the top is going to be a positive moment. Well, in this case, this is causing tension on the top and compression on the bottom. So this is gonna be opposite of our positive sign convention. And this, at this point, is going to be a negative moment. So sometimes I'll even write this in, where I say, well, if it looks like this, tension on the top, compression on the bottom, that's gonna to be a negative internal 
moment, right? So clearly you can see this is counterclockwise on the left side of the beam, counterclockwise that's going to be our negative. So that starts at a negative 13.6 kip feet on our moment diagram and that's what our M0 is going to be, right? So when we look at this, what we know is we're going to start at minus 13.6 so M0 is going to be minus 13.6 kip feet. So we can plot that here and we can plot that somewhere, you know, around, let's say somewhere here. So minus 13.6. Well, that's M0. M1, if you remember our formula for M1, this is going to be M0 plus A1. And when we add minus 13.6 and 20.48, we get plus 6.88 kip feet. So what does that look like? Well, it looks like we have to come up, you know, at this point here. So at this point, we have to come up to 6.88 kip feet. So let's draw that point in. So if we come up, it's going to be somewhere around here. You know, this will be 6.88 kip feet. And then lastly, our moment at 2 is going to equal our moment at 1 plus A2. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 15.68 from 6.88 and this will get us back to minus 8.8 kip feet. Okay, so we can come in and we can plot that point in and that's gonna be somewhere around here and I'll label that minus 8.8. .8. Okay, so this is, you know, this, these are our three points on our curve now. And we can see, okay, the, the positive moment here is definitely not going to control the, the, the overall beam design, all other things being considered, but it is, it is significant, right? So we can plot in a parabola here to make this thing look about right. Okay, so there's our parabola and there's our moment diagram. So I can shade this in. And our moment diagram for AB is done, right? So the next thing that we have to do is just come over and find our areas, you know, we'll call this A3, and A3 is just gonna be 2.9 kips times four feet, and what we get for that is 11.6 kip feet, and similarly we can do A4, which is gonna be minus 1.1 kips times four feet, and we'll get uh, minus 4.4 kip feet. Okay, so similar to what we did before is we can come up with our moments. Our moment at three is just going to be the moment that we start with here. So this moment is going to be 8.8 .8, and just like we said before, right, this moment is causing a, a, a counterclockwise rotation at joint B. So this moment is causing that, is causing, what it's doing is it's causing tension on the top, compression on the bottom. So that's going to be, it's going to match our negative sign convention here, our negative internal sign convention for moment. So we're going to start out at, at minus 8.8. .8. And you might say, well, that makes some sense because it does hopefully, because when we see here is the moment's going to match where we were at joint B on the other side. And this is true for beams. It's not necessarily true for, uh, you know, when we start getting into frames and have more than two members framing into a joint. But M3 is just going to equal minus 8.8 .8 kip feet. Okay. And now for M4, you know, this, the moment at 0.4, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, this is going to equal M3, the previous moment, plus the area. So M3 plus uh, A3. Okay. So what does this look like? This looks like 11.6 uh, minus 8.8 .8 and we get 2.8 kip feet. Okay, so this is going to go from minus 8.8 .8 all the way up to, you know, I'll put it on this side, 2.8 kip feet. And then for M5, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, this is going to be M4, you know, plus A4. And what this is, is we're going to have 2.8 minus 4.4, and that should bring us back down to minus 1.6. So we can plot that here as well, and this is going to be you know minus 1.6 kip feet. So now all that's really left is connect to connect the dots, and because we have a constant height shear, we're going to have a constant slope moment diagram. So let's draw those lines in. So there's line one, and line two is going to look like this. And lastly, what we can do is just shade this in. And our moment diagram is done. So we've gone through and solved for our shear diagram, our moment diagram, shear, and moment for beam AB and beam BC. So that's the end of this big long problem on moment distribution. 
as you do it, it does get easier. But again, there is confusion as you first get started. Why? Because it's confusing, okay? And But the power of it is really pretty neat. And once you understand it, you really end up under, understanding kind of a lot about structural analysis, how these joints work, what the rotation looks like, right? What a fixed end moment looks like, right? But how the stiffness and the lengths might affect the moment. Okay, so I hope this helps. Hey, if it does, you know, feel free to like it. If not, you know, let me know. Send me a comment. Let, let me know what I can uh, explain more clearly. I'll try and follow up with some more videos here as well and, and more examples for this moment distribution process because it can be tricky. All right, but hey, I hope this helps. Until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.